and welcome, I'm your code monkey. The SSR is full of awesome tools and ads to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video let's check out some highlights for August 25. This one is a list of paid systems and tools. In the last video I already covered the best for new assets, and next one I'll be covering top visuals and effects. As always there's links to the assets in the description, and as a bonus you can use the coupon code monkey 10 to get 10% off your order. By the way, my code monkey token asset is currently on sale. This is a collection of 40 tools and elements to help you make games better and faster. A lot of these are very easy to use, literally just drag and drop. So if you need a bunch of useful windows, useful functions, or some very interesting game mechanics, then check it out. Or check out everything on sale. These are 250 of the best newest assets. You can find all kinds of interesting stuff, all of it 50% off. And if your order is over $50, you can get an extra 10% off using the coupon SEPTEMBER2025. Check it out with the link in the description. All right, so starting off with a really awesome tool for something that I always disliked about Unity, it's called the Ultimate Preview Window. And just like the name implies, it massively improves the preview window. You know that window in the corner, that nine times out of 10, it shows the default Unity character in pink. Then the animation, sometimes they just show up on the floor and you cannot preview VFX or really anything like that. So yep, this tool helps solve all of that. First, the animation preview actually looks proper. You can see it with proper lighting, proper colors. You can rotate the camera and really just looks a hundred times better. Then you can also preview particle effects. So this is awesome. Usually for VFX, you need to add them to a scene to see what they look like. With this tool, you no longer need to do that. UI as well, you can easily preview a UI prefab and modify all kinds of things. Then you can also preview sprite animations, preview 3D models, preview objects in the scene and a bunch more. So you have really awesome, really nice tool. It is definitely one of those that makes you wish Unity had this by default. Next, if you're making a game with a ton of units, then you probably want some formations. If so, here's a tool to help with that. This is actually something that is relatively tricky to implement. I've made a few strategy RTS games and this part is actually always surprisingly tricky. Setting up the formations in the code can be quite difficult, so because of that, this tool definitely seems quite useful. It supports a dynamic number of units. As you add more, the shape adapts to the new number. You can click and drag to essentially rotate the formation, so something like Total War. And it can also be used with any navigation method. So it works with something like Unity's NetMesh or the ASAR Pathfinding project. This asset really works on top of navigation, then the characters move and they go to the perfect place. So you have very useful if you're making a game with all kinds of units. Then here's a fun interesting one, it's a decal collider. So it does exactly what it says, it adds colliders to your decals. It is very easy to use, just add the decal collider component and that's it. My first thought is I have no idea how exactly this can be useful, but if for example if you want to make some kind of graffiti system, then this would basically allow you to check what specific graffiti the player was looking at. Or alternatively you could use it to prevent decal overlaps. So do a raycast in order to see is the decal already there, if so disable it, or actually intentionally allow overlaps to make something like a merge game, so place multiple decals on top of one another to make sure they merge. So this one is definitely a very niche thing, I've never seen anything like it, which means it's really great. If you're the first person to learn how to use this kind of niche tool, you can use it to make some interesting unique mechanic, and with that you might find your game finds quite a lot of success. And if you don't know how to use decals at all, if so, I have a lecture on the decal projector in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. Next, here's a tool set to help you maintain your project. This one helps scan your entire project and look for potential issues. So things like missing references, duplicate components, invalid materials, and a bunch more. You can identify all of them, and then with a single click, you can fix them all. You can also define custom problems that match some custom rules you define. It helps you clean up unused files, helps you click on an object and locate all the references to that object. So this test is a nice collection of tools to help you maintain your project and keep things nice and clean. It seems quite useful and apparently this is a new version since it already has 160 5 star reviews. Then if you're making a game that involves city traffic, look at this one. It's a traffic system, so you can set up some lanes and roads, then the cars drive around exactly as you expect. This is the kind of thing that is quite useful if you're trying to make your city come alive. So if you're making a game kind of like GTA or some adventure game that takes part in a city, using a tool like this can help make that city feel much more alive. You can define all your roads, they can have curves, intersections, you can define the traffic lights to control the traffic flow, and of course all the cars obey those rules, you won't get any crashes. They are also quite intelligent with lots of sensors on the cars, meaning they drive perfectly and they actually also avoid dynamic obstacles like some temporary construction. It looks like a nice asset to speed up pretty much any game that has a city. Then if you're making something in 2D, here is a sprite toolkit. This one is a collection of tools to help you with 2D sprites. It helps you validate them, for example fix sprite sizes or import settings. You can downscale or upscale sprites. You can easily add some extra space on the sides if you need to for various shader effects. Or alternatively, you can do the opposite. You can trim that empty space. You can also pad some space in order to reach a power of 2 so the sprite can be compressed. 
You can also create a single atlas from multiple sprites, and you can do all of this automatically or by pressing a button. So yep, if you work a lot with sprites, then this can be quite useful. Next up, if you want to track your tasks inside Unity, here is the task manager. You can define various tasks, write the title and description, and mark them as done when completed. So it's just like many other tools that exist, but importantly, this one exists inside Unity itself, so you don't need to go to an external website or external tool. You can capture bugs, capture ideas, or really anything you want. And since it's native to Unity, because that, it means you can reference various game objects, various prefab scripts, all kinds of things, reference them directly on the task itself. So that alone seems like a very nice bonus of it being Unity based as opposed to being external. This one supports multiple Kanban boards with drag and drop. It has autosave, backups, it is offline, and has a bunch more features. So this is perfect for solo devs or small teams. Then if you're using UI Toolkit and you want a toolset to help you make complex things, here is the ultimate UI Toolkit. It's interesting to see more and more UI Toolkit tools coming out every single month. On this one, one of the things that caught my eye right away is how it includes a Unity UI to UI Toolkit converter. Honestly, this is one of those things that Unity should probably add by default. I imagine this would be quite useful. I'm very curious to try this out myself. I wonder if there are any limitations on the conversion. But then it also has many other features. You can add all kinds of gradients and grid layouts. You can set up some keyframe animation and sequencing. You can use the built-in tween library and set up some debugging alongside various interesting effects. So if this one does seem like a nice addition on top of UI Toolkit. And next, here's a very interesting one. It's a project meant to help you learn. So this one was built by a studio with 10 years of professional experience. This project is a simple casual game. But the main thing is how it is built using industry-level architecture. You can inspect all the source code to see all of the Unity best practices, as well as real-world design patterns, all of them being actually used. It has a fully documented manual explaining the reason behind every single decision. This implements things like MVC architecture. It implements the command pattern. It has custom editor scripts. Explains what is a single entry point, how to transition between various game states. You can learn all about draw call batching, safe async programming, learn about addressables, unit tests, and a bunch more. It seems like a very interesting learning project. So if you want to do some interactive learning, then maybe give this a try. And then if you want to make nanograms or Picross, here is a nanogram engine. Honestly, I only learned what is Picross just a few months ago. I didn't know what it was, but it is a really cool game. This is basically a framework for helping you build those. It supports either monochrome or colors. It has a puzzle editor so you can define your own shapes. It includes some abilities, some custom theming, and a bunch more. So if you want to either make a complete Picross game, if so, then this is a nice base. Or if you really just need a fun mini game inside your game, if so, then this is also quite nice. All right, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on the Unity App Store for August 25. There's a link to all in the description, and as bonus, you can use the coupon code Maggie 10 to get 10% off your order. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.